Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. We're really excited. Today is the start of our second Summer Sundays in the series of four. We're spotlighting the National Synchrotron Light Source too. We have great activities for kids up at those facilities and also it provides an opportunity for adults to come and learn about the science that we do here at the laboratory. And I can't tell you how much our scientists love talking to children about what it is that they do. The name of the building is the National Synchrotron Light Source Number 2. What you see here is the, uh, it's a ring building. It's a, the circumference is something like 900 meters, which is almost a thousand yards. If you want to use X-rays on a microscopical level, where you really want to look at very small details to understand what kind of processes are going on here, so you need an X-ray source like ours, because you need thousand times, ten thousand times, a million times more light on a very small spot. Like in a light microscope, you want to see small details to understand what is really going on. And when you look at the um, electrical cars over the last 10 or 20 years, they've done a tremendous um, improvement in quality of the batteries and quality of the cars itself because people understand more and more what is really going on in the battery and make the batteries better and better. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an old penny, we're going to get it cold in the nitrogen, we're going to put it on this metal anvil here, and then we're going to smash it with a hammer to show you that even though it's very cold, it still stays reasonably pliable, ductile, flexible. Ah, but not so much with the neural one. It's really very exciting, and it's a challenge, because, you know, we spend all day long talking to engineers and scientists in our own kind of language, and uh, we're trying very hard to uh, be able to express what we're doing because we really feel it's very important and we're very passionate about it uh, to people that don't do this for a living, that uh, are all ages, because we want to uh, share with them uh, just how important this is. We're looking at how a bell reacts in a vacuum, so because uh, sound needs air to travel and uh, to come to your ears. If you remove all the air, you're going to remove the ability for the sound from the bell to travel to your ears. Now we there we go. There we go. Wow. That's pretty much why everything's so silent in space. Uh, space doesn't have as many air molecules. It has some, but very, very few. So sound doesn't travel in space. What they're building are crystal models. Um, at the synchrotron we use crystals in order to select the particular wavelengths of x-rays that we use for experiments. The other thing we do with crystals is many scientists bring crystals of individual proteins to the synchrotron. And those proteins, we put them in the beam and we get an x-ray diffraction pattern. And the x-ray diffraction pattern will tell us about where the individual atoms are in the molecule. So each one of these would be an atom in a molecule. And it would allow us to understand the actual structure of the protein at the atomic resolution. So we can tell exactly where every atom is in the protein structure. Uh, sound of light. Basically, we show them how we convert light signal into the sound signal, which both are waves in the nature. So here you see the patterns that has uh, high frequency outside and low frequency inside. And we put it on the spinning motor to spin them. And little kids shoot laser at outside where it reflects faster and inside reflects slower. It's like the CD. And it's the CD how it works because inside of CD you have uh, different beats and basically they just record the frequency. Uh, if I'm, I'm not an expert on that, but you have the laser and CD that basically take, pick up the reflection from the inside of the CD that get to learn, uh, you get hear the music. That's uh, pretty similar of the nature of this. You can never tell what, what, what young child comes in and, and just something triggers uh, uh, the passion in them. And maybe it's a, it's a seed that grows as they get bigger and they see that uh, uh, these are real people just like them 
doing uh, important, exciting things, and, and it's accessible. Uh, it's, it's not some bizarre, reclusive person. It's, it's, it's everyday people that are excited about what they're doing, doing the kind of work we do here.